What's up artist friends? Today we're going to go over seven bad art habits that you really need to be breaking right now. And we're going to jump right into it, okay? We're going to start with number one, which is unrealistic expectations. If you are just getting started out in art, understand that you are a beginner. If you've been doing art for a little while and you're still not where you think you should be, have you put in your time? Now, they say that you need to put in 10,000 hours to master something. I'm not suggesting that you're going to need 10,000 hours to get better, but it just goes to show that you're going to have to practice. Don't set the bar so high off the bat that you're going to be discouraged getting into it to start with. You have to understand that just with anything, whether it's art or baseball or driving a car, riding a bike, it takes time to learn. And once you learn, you're going to get better at it and you're going to find your confidence building and it works exponentially to steamroll and you will continue on your artistic journey and be very happy with the results as long as you keep persevering. Okay, persistence is very important. But the bottom line is before you get started in art, if you're first jumping into it, it's important that you mitigate those realistic expectations because it's very easy to sit there and look at, you know, something that Bob Ross does very well is he makes it look very easy in 30 minutes to do a start to finish painting. Now, I don't know if you're doing oil painting wet on wet or just learning to draw, but I will tell you that those paintings that he did, he practiced before he went up there. It's not just off the top of his head. There were rehearsals and there is muscle memory involved. You know, he's able to kind of create a perfect circle with his finger for a moon or, um, you know, the snow just breaks perfectly over a mountain. That all takes practice and time. And I know he makes it look so easy and that's part of the appeal to it and the draw to it, but have realistic expectations of what you as a beginner, or even if you've been doing art for a little while now, starting out should do set small goals and try to reach those small goals instead of looking at the end game of I should be able to paint as well as a photograph. That I think that's real. I mean, that's that, that's that's real talk right there. And this isn't even a real talk. So double down for this hardest problem. All right, let's go to number two. All right, the second thing are leaving your brushes soaking in water. Does this look familiar? Is this a familiar site? Is this something that you've done? Is this something that's currently sitting in your studio? This is a big, big no-no, okay? Uh, I've said this before, but I think it bears repeating. It's very important you don't leave your brushes soaking in water or especially solvent. It's very bad for your brushes. Why is it bad for your brushes? You're not just gonna take my word for it? Well, I'll, let me explain. The first thing is when you leave your brushes in water like this, um, the brushes are sitting on the bottom and they're being like forced in a certain angle. And over time, the bristles will be trained to be at that angle. And then if you, know, you want your brush kind of looking like this without me having my finger on it, well, great, because that's what's going to happen. Um, the time and gravity are going to kind of force those bristles out of shape, and you want to keep your brushes looking sharp so that they work for you. Uh, secondly, as you leave your brush in water, what's going to happen is over time, and when I say over time, I don't mean, you know, uh, over years, uh, over, you know, an hour or two, that water is going to start creeping up the ferrule, okay? And then it can get past the ferrule glue into the handle. Now, I have seen this happen many times because, believe it or not, even <laughs> I had to learn this the hard way, most brush handles are made of wood. And what happens is the water soaks through all this into the wood and then this starts to swell and then split, rendering your brushes fairly useless, if not just ugly. So you don't want to store your brushes like this, okay? I know that it's very tempting, especially if you're in a rush, and I guess it's okay maybe once in a while, but I don't even want to say that to you because you get in a bad habit. I'm not giving you permission to do this. No, 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 no. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to clean your brushes, right? And then the best way to store them, which is not always practical, is suspend it upside down. But a much more practical way is to store them flat on a table, okay? Now, we have this Rhino Tough brush roll. I love this thing. This is a great way to store your brushes because you can put them in while they're still wet, all right? You store them flat. I'm, I'm not gonna do all of them here. I've talked about this brush roll before, it's awesome. This is a uh, water, waterproof material, okay? And this will, like I said, you can put them in wet. The water's not gonna damage it. And then you can just put your brushes in flat, roll it up, and be on your way, okay? So really great tool. Brush roll, if you don't want to leave your brushes just out on a table. So also keep them uh, easy for travel, get them, um, take them with you, all that good stuff. 
So please, please, please break this bad art habit of leaving your brushes in water. I want your brushes to be an investment, something that lasts you a long time. The third bad art habit that you need to break is not taking breaks, not stepping back, sometimes for some people not sleeping, okay? You need to get some distance sometimes between you and your art. You know, you take a step back, you know, they say, you know, they kind of walk away for an hour, you come back and, you know, you might see something you didn't see before. You get so absorbed into the what you're working on that you don't even really see that you're kind of doing something and maybe out of perspective or maybe you're kind of like getting into this sort of creative block as you're trying to move and you're just overworking and reworking and over mixing and it just becomes a big hot mess. We don't want hot messes, okay? We want to take breaks just like anything else. I want balance. I want you to have a little bit of time to take a step back from that artwork, make sure that you're resting properly. And you know, when I say that, you know, not even sleeping, a lot of times that's not really necessarily the hobby artist, but you know, to some of the professional artists out there, those that are trying to make a deadline, they push and they push and they push and they push. And maybe they get it done, maybe they don't, but they're exhausted and they're not taking care of themselves first. And to be a good, healthy artist, you have to be healthy first. So make sure that you're taking those breaks when you can. Make sure that you're giving yourself a break and of course taking a step back from your artwork so you can get some new fresh eyes on it uh, every so often or so. All right, the fourth bad art habit I need you to break is to stop putting out too much or too little paint. Okay, well how am I supposed to know how much is enough? Well, let's just look at the different mediums, okay? And we're gonna stick with those big three, oil, acrylic, and watercolor. All right, when it comes to oil and watercolor, I don't really worry too much about putting out too much because it doesn't go bad quickly, especially watercolor, you can always re-wet it. And with oil paint, I mean, it lasts a long time. Just put some you know, plastic wrap over it and it will last even longer. It, it, it doesn't dry uh, the way the third one, acrylic paint, can. Now with acrylic paint, you have a very small window. So um, if you put out too much and you're not gonna be doing an active painting session, unless you're using a proper airtight palette, it's gonna dry on your palette if you walk away from it, okay? So you don't wanna put out too much, you wanna put out enough for the painting session you're gonna be using, okay? Um, with that being said, there are ways that you can keep those paints fresher longer, even acrylics. Now this is just a disposable palette, it's pretty easy. This is our Soho Airtight palette, okay? This is gonna keep your, pa your paints wet longer so you can put out more paint and not worry about wasting it because I'm all about saving you guys money where I can because when it comes to not having to rebuy brushes and not wasting paint, I think this is important, okay? Now what makes this palette so cool in my opinion is you can use it with just about any medium. You can use it with watercolor, uh, you can use it with oil because of the type of plastic it is, the solvent won't damage it, and you can use it with acrylic. And all you're gonna do is put your acrylic paints in here. Um, I like to give it a light mist of uh, water before I close it and just seal it up and that will keep your paint fresh for like over a week, okay? So it extends the life of this. I think that this is a really great palette. I'm gonna actually link to this down below uh, and you can check that out a little bit later. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty universal palette regardless of what kind of medium you're using and it does a lot of uh, different things, a lot of great mediums and of course no matter what you're using, watercolor, acrylic, or oil, it will keep the paints fresh. The fifth thing I want you to stop doing right now, and now this five becomes a stop, okay? Stop putting yourself down and especially comparing yourself to others, okay? We're all on our own artistic journeys and it is unrealistic, going back to that first bad art habit, to set your expectations to match somebody else. You do you, you do the best that you can do and don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Don't worry about, even if you're following a tutorial, and the person on there is doing something and you're trying and you're trying and it's just not working out, you have to practice. That person that's teaching you has put in the time and has practiced, okay? But I don't want you being too hard on yourself because then you just won't want to do art anymore. You'll be like, I'm not good enough. And that kind of starts ringing in your head, I'm not good enough, I, I can't, I can't. And then when you start saying I can't, then it becomes I won't and then it becomes I, I reject it, all right? Don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself a break, understand it's a journey, okay? If you if you just think that you're gonna go from A to, to Z and, and skip everything in between, I mean, you're missing out on half the fun. I mean, part of the fun is watching yourself improve. I, I've always enjoyed that, seeing like you know some of my earlier stuff compared to the stuff that I'm doing now, and I'm looking forward to the stuff that I'll do in the next few years. I, I think that, that that's important that you understand it's a process and you're not getting so caught up in this moment right now because it's not doing exactly what you want, okay? Give yourself a break, understand that it's okay if you're not where you want to be yet, that is the challenge. And set those little mini goals like we talked about earlier so that you can get yourself from A to Z while enjoying B through Y. I am very impressed that I knew where those letters were. 
Did I get it right? The sixth habit that I want you to break right now, which, you know, it's not just art, but I think uh, artists can definitely relate. I need you to stop procrastinating, okay? There's a lot of reasons why you aren't doing art right now. Some of you, uh, you know, are watching this and you're like, well, I'm just not in the mood, you know? Oh, okay, you're not in the mood. Or maybe you're thinking to yourself, you know, I just, I just haven't been inspired lately. I, I need... I need to be fulfilled with something that makes me feel very special and then I get the special out of my canvas. Um, there are any plethora, plethora or plethora? Plethora. Plethora, gotta say the right word. There's any plethora of reasons why you're not doing art right now, okay? And procrastinating is unfortunately, believe it or not, a form of creative block that's not gonna get better, okay? There's a book, The Art of War, you might have heard of. Uh, it's pretty popular. In fact, I'm pretty sure even if you haven't read it, you've heard of the book, The Art of War. But what you might not have heard of is the book, The War of Art. I hope I'm getting that title right. The War of Art. Maybe it's The War on Art. I think it's The War of Art. Anyway, regardless, you can look it up. What this book basically is, because it's a full book, but there's like pretty much just one message. The message is a Nike logo. Just do it. The, the message is you just have to jump in and do it, even if you don't want to, even if you're not inspired, even if you don't even know what you're going to do. You just kind of force yourself to be in it. And that, that book's not just about fine art, of course. I mean, that could be talking about, you know, whether you want to write a book, uh, maybe you want to create a new recipe, choreograph a dance, whatever it is, whatever your creative side is, right? And you're, and you're fighting that creative block or whatever it is you're going through. What this book preaches is push through, just do it. Don't think, well, I shouldn't go there because I'm not ready. It's not like you're going to bed before you're tired. This is a different kind of mentality. This is like, I am going to sit down and force myself to create something. Even if I'm not gonna love it, at least I'm creating, at least I'm using that right side of my brain because regardless of what kind of art you're doing, uh, it's all coming from the right side of the brain, okay? As I like to say, I'm a student of all the arts and especially the fine arts being in my family business, um, I'm very conscientious of that. So stop procrastinating, get to it. The seventh thing, that is going to sound the most self-serving to me, okay? But, but hear me out. The bad art habit you need to break is using cheap art materials, okay? And when I say cheap, I don't necessarily mean you're using student grade, I mean cheap. Let me show you. I'm talking about cheap, cheap art supplies, stuff that you get at craft stores in the discount bins. Um, this stuff is, I don't know, it's, it's fun. Like, I, I put this on par with like, pretend toys, like a pretend kitchen so that my kids can pretend that they're cooking. You're not really gonna be able to make anything great. This stuff is really, really not ideal, okay? And allow me to explain because again, you're gonna sit there and say, of course you want me to buy the most expensive stuff and you don't want me shopping in craft stores. I'm not saying that, what I'm saying is, if you go into doing fine art using the cheapest stuff you can find, you are going to be unhappy with the results. The tools you buy, brushes, the surface, the paints, they need to be working for you, not against you, and you are gonna have a very hard time getting these supplies to behave. I'm talking about these brushes having loose bristles, um, the heads getting loose, paints that seem to mix nothing but mud, canvases that can be pierced with your fingernail, okay? Again, I'm not saying you have to buy the most expensive stuff out there, but you should be getting the best art supplies that are in your budget, okay? And sometimes that means it's a student grade, and that's fine. A student grade art supply is a lot different than just kind of bulk made stuff overseas. There is a big difference, okay? Even student grade stuff that is under a brand name of an artist has certain quality standards, okay? So again, I'm not saying jump out there and buy the most expensive stuff. If anything, uh, if you look back to you know me talking about those brushes, I want you to invest in quality materials that will last you a long time because then if you don't have to keep rebuying your brushes, you can spend more money on a higher quality paint, higher quality surfaces. I'm trying to give and take here where you can kind of save some money if you take care of those things that you invest in but then also save some money uh, where you're not necessarily having to rebuy brushes all the time. Uh, you're gonna go through paint, you're gonna go through paper, you're gonna go through canvas, but those constant things, easels, brushes, all these you know kind of fixtures in your studio, uh, these are things that you wanna buy quality so you don't have to rebuy them frequently, okay? I, I hope that that's a good balance there because the point is not for me to come up here and you know force down your throat, you need to be buying higher quality stuff. 
it's about using stuff that's gonna make your art experience better and make you feel better as an artist. If you guys are interested in either of these things that I showed you in the video earlier, the Rhino Tough brush roller or the Soho Airtight palette, okay, I'm gonna have special links down below along with the discount code. The discount code is good for the weekend. So we post these videos on Friday morning. Uh, look at the date of this video to make sure it's the right weekend. Um, and then the, those codes will last until Sunday night. And if you're interested in seeing what I'm up to, you can always follow me on Instagram at Mike, not Jerry. Uh, handles very, uh, very specific because any male that works at Jerry's Adorama, everybody always asks, hey, are you Jerry? Like, uh, no, I'm Mike, not Jerry. Um, Jerry's my grandpa and my son. So he's going to be Jerry, not Mike, not Jerry. That, I got to reserve that. Yeah, don't you take that if I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, and we'll see you on our next artist problem. So if you're watching this after the fact, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button so you know when we post new videos so there's an opportunity that you can catch another deal in the future. And of course, if this video is helpful, please give it a big thumbs up because it helps us get the message out to a lot of other people. I want people to know.